We're over here on Jefferson Street. This is the original GBC property from a couple hundred years ago after we left when we were meeting at the courthouse. I want you to see this facility. This was never our building, though this was the GBC property. When our congregation left this location and, and came over to the current location, this was a property that was deeded then to the African American population, many of them slaves or a few perhaps uh, freed persons. I want you to see this location because it was from here that we would have conducted our original uh, baptisms. We would have gone just down Jefferson Street here, just behind us is Royal Spring as it flows out to meet Elkhorn Creek. One of the things that's been lost today in our culture is some sense of the complexity of baptism for years gone by. Back in these days, in the life of our church, we would have walked down and gone straight to the water's edge, many of us singing, walking right behind those who were robed, preparing to go into the water. And there was a sense of holiness about that journey. We talk today about remembering your baptism, but early generations of GBC folks would have remembered that walk and the entire congregation walking with them down to the water's edge, singing songs, praying over them, rejoicing, and coming back up to here at our original physical plant. So here we are at the creek, and part of that memory, of course, is coming down here for baptism. I want to share with you a very special story from our history and from Baptist history in Kentucky, and it's the story of a man named George Washington Dupee. George Washington Dupee was born in Gallatin County in the 1820s as a child to parents who were slaves. Growing up in Kentucky in Woodford County and Franklin County, uh, he was of course a part of an estate of a landowner named Lewis Craig. You may remember his name and that's a story for another time. As a slave, the legend is that Dupee was led to Christ in Versailles, downtown Versailles, by one of the ministers there, and soon thereafter felt called to minister. He ended up living here in Scott County and became a part of our church in the 1840s. In about 1851, our church ordained him to the gospel ministry. Preachers at his ordination service included the pastor of Georgetown Baptist Church at the time, as well as the then president of Georgetown College. Uh, he served uh, this congregation in Georgetown, the African American congregation, for several years and sometime in that span he also started serving historic Pleasant Green Baptist Church in downtown Lexington. If that rings a bell but you're not sure where to place it, Pleasant Green is the church that keeps watch over Rupp Arena from across the large single level parking lot there. But he was serving both congregations at the time. Uh, he eventually, a couple years after that arrangement, moved down to Paducah and became the influential pastor of what became the mother church for all sorts of African American congregations across the state started the first Black Baptist Local Association, started the, uh, the first statewide uh, Baptist body among African Americans that still exists to this day, started publishing the first Black Baptist newspaper in the state, and even helped purchase and lead toward the creation of Simmons College in Louisville, which is now connected with our own Baptist Seminary of Kentucky. The story of Dupee is a special one. But here in Georgetown, his story is remembered in a different way. There's a local legend here that takes pieces of his life and puts them together in a little bit different way. You see, right in the middle of all that, as he was serving the two congregations, history tells us that he was a part of that estate of Lewis Craig when it closed, when it was finalized and that the rights to him as a slave, it's hard for us even to think in those terms today, but the rights to him as part of that estate were to be auctioned off on the steps of our courthouse. Members of Pleasant Green Baptist Church in downtown Lexington approached the pastor of First Baptist Church, the Anglo congregation there, and asked for help purchasing the freedom of their pastor. Members of First Baptist, including the pastor, did help, and for years after that, Pleasant Green 
and, and Pastor Dupee were repaying uh, to, to pay off for his freedom. The way that's remembered locally here in local legend is that it wasn't after his ordination, it was in his baptism. The way it's remembered here locally is that as he came up out of the waters of baptism, he was seized and taken to Lexington to the Cheapside slave auction where he was to be sold off down river to Louisiana or Mississippi or someplace. We can understand why it was remembered that way. Because for persons who were born into slavery and, and decades, even generations later, children of slaves and those much later in life who knew former slaves and children of slaves would have associated being in a place like a public baptism as a dangerous sort of thing because someone might show up and lay, lay claim to your freedom. And it's remembered that sense of fear and that sense of deep commitment that was connected to baptism for generations past.